morning, everyone. Good morning, and welcome to Denver Startup Week. Glad to have you. So thank you for joining us at the 11th annual Denver Startup Week. Thank you to our title sponsors, Amazon, Capital One Cafe, Dell for Startups, and the Downtown Denver Partnership. This session is a part of the Maker Track, sponsored by one of eight programming tracks aimed at supporting the entire entrepreneurial team. By attending this session, you are agreeing to the following following our code of conduct, as well as to being photographed or recorded on video. So be sure to share your experience at this session using uh, the hashtag, hashtag Denver Startup Week, sorry, hashtag Den Startup Week, and hashtag Linear Function. And just a few more sponsors. Thank you to all these lovely folks. Without them, none of this would be possible. We are super <laughs> grateful. So, performance art at its core is about connection. Connection between you, the audience, and the contents that's being presented, or the connection between the audience and the viewers, and the performers. So we're all a huge part of a digital future, and it benefits us by opening up channels of communication by making it easier and faster for us to communicate with each other and connecting. So speaking of connecting really quickly, I know everyone has a smartphone. Yes, maybe so. If you do, how many of you actually have an app on your smartphone? Zoom, Netflix, maybe a dating app? Maybe, just saying. Okay, so all of these things we use to connect with each other through technology. A quick little fun fact. During the pandemic, Zoom was downloaded more than two million times since the lockdown began, which is up more than 56,000 times per day in the last, in over two months. So another fun fact, we talked about the dating app for all my lovers, not fighters. Did you know that by the year 2035, most people will have found love or companionship through online dating? So yes, technology definitely has a way of connecting us, but at what cost? less human connection, less human interaction. So we want to ask you, how can you take your business or your craft into a more digital and more accessible future while maintaining your emotional and social connections while incorporating technology? Maybe even take it a step further. Further, How do you continue this connection um, and also encourage integrity, balance, and most of all, connection? So for the next few moments, I want you to observe what you feel versus what you see. Remember, what you feel versus what you see.
All right, so before um, Donna and I performed, Donna asked you guys to think more about what you felt versus what you saw. Does anyone want to possibly shout out a word, a phrase, a sentence about something they felt? If you felt anything while watching us do an accent of our duet, you can shout it out. You don't have to raise your hand. Anything. Tension. Tension. One. Connection. Connection. Very good. Alive. Alive. Alice. Ooh, all these words are in the conversation. <laughs> so I should probably introduce myself. I'm Kayla Collymore, uh, co-creator of Linear Function, professional dancer, choreographer, filmmaker, and artistic director. Uh, originally from New Jersey, uh, but kind of floating at the moment. <laughs> And my name is the Donna Crump. I am also the other half and co-creator of Linear Function. Um, I'm artistic director, creative performing artist, independent choreographer, dance extraordinaire. Um, and I'm just a New Orleans girl, born, raised, and stayed in New Orleans. Currently, my feet are planted in the great city of Houston. So thank you for welcoming us here in Denver. All right, so before we get into it, I just want to talk about how we met. We met on a photo shoot in Houston in 2020 and uh, briefly exchanged words, but exchanged social media. I commented on a post that she made about a week later, and she immediately responded, inviting me to her studio for a wiggle, which is like an improv jam or like a vibing of sorts, to you know each other. Um, and we quickly realized we had a ton of chemistry, just easy connection. I'm naturally a flowy dancer, she's fiery, and it just complemented each other really well. Uh, she asked me to come back and collaborate on uh, bringing back the duet she choreographed entitled Jen Her to be performed at the Contemporary Arts Museum of Houston. Uh, so we were still deep into the pandemic. The museum was closed to the public, so we restaged it in an exhibition called Wildlife for Women's History Month. And, um, we filmed it and it was screened for audiences around Houston. Uh, that went really well for us. Um, I think that kind of started to put us on the map a little bit and started to notice our work. And then we continued to meet and wiggle and little <laughs> experimental phrases grew into concrete choreography and it started to take on concepts from the current day events that were going on in 2020. We all know about that. Um, and then our personal experiences also inserted itself into our work. So um, I don't know about you guys, but I was unemployed. There's Same. <laughs> feeling quite unessential. Um, and also my dad passed from COVID in April 2020. So it was a little bit up and down. It was a journey to come back to connecting my mind and body. I just wanted to like, sleep and eat all the time. Um, but I got back, I started improv in my garage and choreographing a lot and sharing it on social media. And I was surprised that I got a lot of feedback. I realized I was missing a connection though with a real life human being and partnering. And most of all, missing a connection with an audience. <laughs> yes, um, as we've said before, um, as performers, our greatest goal is to connect with you, the audience, first and foremost. And what that does is it creates um, a sense of trust and vulnerability in both of us so that um, we're open enough to share our stories and you're open enough to receive them as well as receive your input as well. Um, I want to do a little disclaimer. Uh, we're not techies or therapists, but instead we're performing artists, um, creators, makers, designers, um, and we actually focus on bringing more, um, bringing more um, energy to exploring the avenues of connecting and keeping the connection of your mind and your body um, through the medium of dance, because that's what we do. Um, so as Kay said, Linear Function, our production, was a product of its time. All of the tension and craziness going on in the world, the political elections of 2020. Um, so we just wanted to create something that represented um, a cleaning of the slate, yeah. Um, something that broke away from a lot of societal um, constructs like class, racism, gender norms, all of these things we hear and talk about every day um, has been used to either devalue or bring value to 
um, people since the beginning of time. So um, that's what one thing we like to incorporate in our work. Um, so basically, we wanted to create with linear function a piece that um, parallels current events and we wanted to bring a sense of dualism to it by incorporating yin-yang characteristics in our work, um, creating balance, um, dualities, um, opposing opposition, opposing forces. So we see a lot of that in the last excerpt. Um, and another thing, a lot of sensory play, just like we did the sage, we incorporate you guys into that just so you can, uh, we can set the space and the mood and energy and the tone for the work that we're sharing. Right, and as two women, we do a lot of partnering in our work, a lot of weight bearing and weight sharing lifts, and that we use a lot to symbolize connection, which someone said, and interdependency. And then later on, we're going to do another excerpt uh, where you'll see us cutting um, to symbolize a freeing from or freeing of. Yes. Um, I want to mention there was a huge, huge learning curve. Um, you see us two women here? It's only two of us Just up here, two. right? Just the two. We did everything, anything yes. you can, we, you name it, we did it. Uh, venue contracts, hiring, lighting designers, props, stools, yeah. movies, films, everything. <laughs> um, and only a matter of two months. So we had a lot, a lot, a lot to do. Um, but following our first premiere in September of 2021, we decided to take things a step further and apply for some funding, uh, which we all know as artists and makers that can be very to come by. So um, we applied for a grant through the city of Houston, and guess what? We got the grant! <laughs> so we were able to build a better production, a bigger and better production, um, entitled Linear Function Borders. Um, and a lot of the excerpts you saw in the video was from the most recent premiere in June, this past June. So here we are now in Denver with you lovely folks. Mm -hmm. um, and we're able to share our stories, yeah? So, um, we also like to incorporate hearing from our audiences and our different viewers. So now, you're going to hear from another one of our audience members and viewers and creators about their personal experience of linear function um, and how multimedia and technology is affected. So for the multimedia aspect of your performance, that was really quite uh, extraordinary and outstanding and so many levels. Uh, the detail of the installation that they built that starts the minute you walk in the door and proceeds in a, in a sort of spherilic fashion to encompass the entire performance space. So you're, you're in an environment with objects, with questions, with textures, with um, fabrics, with video. So there are many things that are acting um, on your eyes and your heart during the performance. So part of what you are witnessing as an audience member is the choreography of connection. So I love the way they, re they relate to each other, the way they exchange weight, uh, the way the choreography works with ritual and ceremony. All those things make it something extraordinary and something you've never seen before. All right, there's that word connection again. So, um, so as I mentioned, this was a product of and it continues to be as we evolve and create different installations. Um, and it's important to mention that we mirrored the world as we saw it at that time. And uh, we can't move on without talking about one major component that we use in our work to connect with our audience, technology. Uh, in an age of ranging attention span and interest and three-year-olds being able to function computers <laughs> way better than I can, um, it's important to continue to try and engage with a varied audience that's uh, becoming more and more influenced by technology and multimedia. Um, so you're probably wondering how dancers connect with technology. Uh, we uh, have a story to tell you. Story time. Um, we, <laughs> so we had, we received the grant Donna talked about from the Houston Arts Alliance, but we had a major I would be away for nine months in the UK touring. Um, that put an entire ocean between us and a six hour time difference. And we had to figure out how to do the bulk of the production while I was away. So the show was gonna take place June 25th and 26th. This is like just past June 26th and 25th. I landed June 20th. 
So that gave us four days in person to put together a two-day production for a live audience, um, totaling, I think, both performances were about 70 to 80 people. So we had to figure out how to do the bulk of the work and collaborate overseas. So we turned to screen dance, um, which is also known as dance for film, dance for camera, and it's the integration of cinematography and choreography. So we choreographed the camera, the movement of the camera, and we choreographed ourselves, just us two women who are also our own dancers. <laughs> so we, um, yeah, so the film, is the dance created for the film, and it's not done until it's edited in the editing room. So it's a different form of just choreographing for a stage, so to say. So it's also important to remember that when you're creating screen dance, Kay mentioned a few of these things, uh, you want to focus on the movement of the camera, your lighting, location, what you're framing exactly, yeah? And with screen dance, you want to use screen dance to capture some things that you may not be able to capture during live performance. Um, I'll use an example. So there are some people spread, spaced out around the room. Um, we did a lot of floor work. Yeah, I'm not sure if everyone had the chance to see the intricate little details of the floor work we were doing. But if we were using this material in, say, a screen dance, then we would use and manipulate the camera in different ways to um, set different angles and different movements and things like that. So it's also very important to mention that even though we are amazing, we did not create screen dance, right? I'm not gonna talk too much about it, but I just wanted to let you know two very uh, important players in the screen dance world. Um, Merce Cunningham and Maya Darren. Merce Cunningham was a choreographer. He was one of the first to actually experiment with film and dance. Um, he actually choreographed a really cool dance work that uses a program called Life Forms. Malcolm, you might want to look that up. <laughs> Uh, it uses the, uh, the program called Life Forms, which captures motion um, technology through dance, yeah. Um, and he also loved working and collaborating with tons of different artists, visual artists, designers, makers, painters, um, sound engineers, all sorts of things like that. Um, Maya Darren actually had a passion for experimenting and kind of creating what we're trying to do here, which is creating an immersive environment. Um, and Maya actually used a lot of um, editing things in her film to create more of an immersive environment for her audience. She believed that the camera was actually another performer. So um, using edits and jump cuts, superimpositions, all these different things while editing helps to bring her uh, digital story into fruition by just um, creating more immersive spaces through the camera. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, right, so before creating our screen dances, we had to communicate via Zoom and Google Docs, uh, especially Pinterest. Um, that actually ended up being super handy for us to pick color schemes and themes and through lines that we wanted to both create in our films. Um, as you can see, there's other, many, many other digital platforms that we use to collaborate overseas. We've got design. Adobe Premiere Pro, we taught ourselves how to use it and we now edit our own film. And let me just tell you, YouTube is everyone's friend. Yeah. Anything you don't know how to do, go to YouTube. Yeah. It has a tutorial for everything. Mm -hmm. uh, income, the way we organized our budgeting and communication and hiring other collaborators. Uh, venue hire, peer space, amazing for any event that you need to hold. Um, and then we created our own merch. We have stickers of ourselves and t-shirts and we held a virtual premiere, which I'll talk more about in a moment. Um, and then these are the things we actually did in person. So as you can see, this is a lot less than the digital platforms that we used. But I personally cannot say that one is more important than the other, especially as a live performing artist. Our in-person contact is extremely important. But it is important to see that as artists, we need to keep up and continue moving into a digital future. So the virtual premiere came about due to multiple requests for people that live outside of Houston. They wanted to see the show, but they didn't want to fly down. <laughs> I mean, because flights are expensive. And we were out. still in the middle of the pandemic, yes. so people were maybe uneasy about seeing art, and live art wasn't necessarily a thing that was 
still being, you know, still going on during these times. So virtual was the way to go. Yeah, and then it became a way to generate more income and uh, awareness. So we sent the link out to grant reviewers, publication reviewers, uh, potential sponsors, collaborators, and the piece just kept kind of working for itself. So now we want to ask you specifically, how can we activate this particular space mm. to keep the social and emotional connections while incorporating the tiny bit of technology? So guess what? There's no time like the present. Let's do it. Yes, Miss Kayla is going to be handing out some pieces of material. Yes, if you all will be so kind and stand up, please. We don't fight, we promise. <laughs> We don't fight, we're just trying to get you connected and be a part of our worlds. that we use to connect the audience. So now that we have danced with a little bit of technology and multimedia, the other very uh, important way that we connect with our audience is through our immersive environments, which you just so created. A very, very small one just now. <laughs> yes, and our immersive environments, remote audience participation, it allows for you to make choices and have a say in how a problem will be solved. So you were, you didn't even have to take the straight for me. You could have just been like, I'm good, right? So I wasn't forcing you to do anything, but a lot of you made to it. Yeah, you said yes. Um, uh, our immersive environments promote self-awareness, creative expression, and social connection. There's that word again, connection. So connecting with Donna and I, and sometimes connecting with each other. 
so we we wanted to make our concept literally tangible, hands-on, so you as an audience member can touch and feel the textures and be included in the presentation with us. It's also really great for keeping young audience members, children, engaged and involved in performances. Um, dads tend to fall asleep in the back row, so once you pull them up out of their seats and have them drawing, they don't really have a choice. <laughs> um, and yeah, you, you'd be surprised how many people just say yes in the moment um, and are not used to such a thing, but I guess you feel like a kid again in a way. Um, yes, so we are not. <laughs> Licensed therapist. We're definitely not. <laughs> um, but we do talk a lot about using art as therapy, right? Um, art can be therapeutic. Um, our particular art allows you to investigate your mind and body connection and maintain that, right? And keeping the connectivity with human connection. Um, so yes, we are not therapists, but you will hear from a licensed, a real licensed therapist, Dr. Rachel Weiner, about her um, experiences um, after seeing linear function several times and her experiences through technology and her emotional and social connections. I've had the privilege of seeing linear function now three times for three different audiences and even had the pleasure of interviewing Kayla and Donna at the Buffalo Soldier National Museum in Houston, Texas. One of the things that I really adore about this work as it continues to evolve is how powerfully and how quickly these women draw in the audience through their senses and even the children um, children, men, women of all ages and backgrounds. Donna and Kayla used all of these readily recognizable archetypes and symbols. This piece is so much about connection and how vital our social connections are. There are very few things that I see in it, very few pieces of art that manage to be both deeply personal and also widely uh, embraced and universal. So Dr. Rachel Weiner talks a lot about sensory play. Um, and between our rituals, the games that we have installed in the space, the activities, the music, and the live dance component, um, it just becomes a more visceral experience for an audience member. As you can see, we have sensory play. So in the beginning, we had our sage. You can smell it, you can see it, you can even close your eyes and maybe have a moment of relaxation. Uh, we have meditative practices. There is an installation in our production where you can pour water into another jar while we spring your intentions. Uh, creative expression, you saw the little boy dancing with the shadow. And then we have, um, I don't know if you noticed the man that came up and drew as we were dancing. And then lastly, um, we have approaching socio-political issues through symbolism in our choreography. Um, and we have activities such as the balancing of Scales. And in a moment, you'll see the cutting that we mentioned earlier. So we like to play with universal themes and concepts, like yin and yang, something that's relatable to a wider audience. And what do you have next? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So for the next few minutes, um, as you sit through our final uh, excerpt of linear function. Again, very, very important. We want you to think about what you feel versus what you see. Yeah? All right.
that we cater to a more intimate audience. Um, again, we don't do the proscenium thing. We like to keep everything 360 and immersive so you can feel a part of um, our experience as well. Um, so I think just keeping, the, not necessarily the audience small, but just the more intimate, cozy uh, space and setting to where we can actually feel each other's energy um, and kind of feed off of that. Um, and, yeah. Go ahead. The traditionally, performances are on a stage in a framed proscenium, raised above the audience, and that's a really like separating culture to it. So we wanted to bring us to the same level and have you guys interact and make it an event that you can go out to with your family and with your kids instead of like dressing up and sitting down and being really quiet and still. Um, especially like I mentioned before, like our attention spans are definitely getting shorter. So I think. We have to engage and have an immersive environment and we, dance at least. We talk a lot about uh, being yeah. human first. Um, yeah. we're, we're artists, but we're human first. Uh, we're not dancers first, right? So just um, always remembering that and it's always trying to find that connection with the other person. Again, whether it's emotional or mental or not physically touching you, right. they're all still connected. Yeah, you can hear it's breathing and you can, yeah. That's a good point, just like the immersive sort of approach. Yeah, make which it is different than maybe what people traditionally think of. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, yeah. Jeff. Thank you. Good question. Anyone else? I got a comment. I feel like due to the fact that we live in such a digital world and we have immersive, immersive things like you guys are doing, it's almost relationships that probably wouldn't occur. Just to kind of create a safe space for the students, you know. Because a lot of times we be scared to speak to each other, but when we immerse, we make it make eye contact and we don't have to give the connection. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Any other detailed question? What was pure space that I saw on your slide? Is something about venues? Oh yeah. yes, you can go online, uh peerspace.com and you put in your location and literally any type of event, venue, a photography session, uh, I need this, I need to throw a barbecue for a party, anything you want, it has a full listing of all of the venues. Wow. And you just uh, put in your request for how many hours and yeah, so you're oh, national? Yes. Yeah, yes. I, I used it in London to find my studio to film with the white psych in the background. I used it for the photo shoot I did. Yeah, we did in we London. Used for everything. And then she used it in Houston. Um, and then even for our performance venue, we use it to rent that. It's like the Airbnb of oh yeah. yeah, it shows what's near you. Yeah. And and the oh, right it's, it's amazing. Oh. Miss Cynthia, you need to www.com. Yeah. Yes. 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 And they have reviews so you can see what other event people held there or they, what equipment they have or if they like it or not, what the types of provide. Everything. Infiltrating 
spaces like this and conferences, tech conferences, art, you know? Yeah, just just getting building a, a, a broader range of, of more collaborators. I think that helps um, within yeah. the university environment. Just, just like yours. Yeah, collaborators is a big thing, yeah. yeah. Mixed media. So we collaborate with this guy named Preston who does floral installations. And maybe someone who wouldn't normally go and see a dance performance, but knew him, would go to support his work and see us there. So just collaborating and connecting just brings in more of an audience that wouldn't normally be there. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. We'll be around. Thank you so much.